you're really regretting your past, feeling ashamed and feeling guilty about it, and then projecting into the future that now it's simply too late for you. You've messed up that much that you're never going to have the future that you hope for. Then this video is perfect for you. I've been there. I know what that's like. Yeah, I know how the mind plays these tricks on us where we experience, you know, what's quite normal to mess up and make mistakes. We're human beings, after all, we're flawed. And when we make those mistakes, it's very easy then to fall into the trap of feeling guilty and ashamed and embarrassed that you should have done something different. And of course, the mind then plays this trick on you, which is torturous, really, that now that's it. Your future is never going to be the way that you want it to be. So you create this battle of stress and tension, and it can get really depressing. It really can. And it can make you feel even more anxious about whether you can trust yourself going forward to make you know good decisions or will you make more mistakes and mess things up even more but it's all a lie let me just point that out to you that you're more powerful than that you have the most incredible mind despite what your mind may actually say about that you see you know and i know this because I've, I've been through this myself i used to be so angry and frustrated with all the mistakes I made. Um, I used to be absolutely, you know, you know, embarrassed about things I'd said and done, avoided due to anxiety and paranoia. And I saw no hope for my future either. It really did get to the point where I thought, I don't know if I can carry on anymore because I've messed things up this much. Um, but again, it was a lie, a lie of the mind, a lie of an anxious mind. And uh, I'll link it below, but I did do a video about the lies of an anxious mind. And it's really worth a watch if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and I see a lot of people commenting, by the way, about how guilty they feel, about how regretful they are of their pasts and how they now have no future. And I promise you, if you're in that position, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're so powerful, but you've kind of forgotten. You really have. And I just want to remind you of something that's a little bit mind blowing when it comes to regret. Something that we don't often talk about enough. And that is we in the past, you couldn't have done anything any different. Because if you could have, you would have. In each moment, your brain will do the best it knows how, the decisions and actions, based on your current mindset. End of. Yet we can judge it later, we can be pleased with it, happy with it, we can be angry with it, or embarrassed. Because in that moment, the brain will simply do what it thinks is the best for you. So, what do we do then if actually looking back, we're thinking, I don't want to do that anymore. I can't keep repeating that because it's hurting me or other people around me. It's diminishing my quality of life. So you're going to want to be able to do something different. And I'm going to share something with you that will hope that will help. And it's you want, in a, in a sense, new thoughts, new feelings and new behaviors. And I can't remember the statistics, so someone might pop it into the comments, but around 80% of your thoughts are apparently the same as yesterday's or the days before, you know, they're repetitive thoughts. So unless you introduce something new into your mind, yeah, with new behaviors and new feelings, then we have a tendency to repeat the past. Which is why I talked about in the the big video that's done quite well on YouTube, uh, investing in your mind, body, heart, and purpose. When you invest in your mind and you can begin to expand upon what is it that you 
really want to experience in life. You know, let's be honest with you. You know, let's be honest here. You didn't choose most of what you're experiencing in life. It's just kind of happening. Yeah, you're, you've been conditioned to want certain things, to behave in certain ways, to think of yourself in certain ways. None of it's even true. It gets quite deep, but the reality is a lot of anxiety comes from, you know, not really living a life aligned with who you really are and what you're really capable of. And if you began to just tap into that, there's the hope that you're looking for. So with new thoughts, new feelings and behaviours, you're going to do something different. So invest in your mind. Now, one way to do that, and I'm going to share that with you now, is one of my favourite techniques. The power in this cannot be underestimated, even though it seems quite simple. Because we want to give something for your subconscious mind and your superconscious mind to aim for. Yeah. So we have conscious mind, how you're watching this video. Subconscious mind, how you're perceiving this video, what you think about it, your beliefs. You have a superconscious mind, which is the reality of who you are. You can call it your soul. You can call it your higher self. You can call it your consciousness, your awareness, whatever you want. Depends on your belief systems. But your superconsciousness is where you get your insights from, your wisdom, your um, creativity, your inner genius. That often just comes out of nowhere when you allow your mind to become quiet, to become still. You know, often our wandering minds come up with these amazing ideas out of nowhere. And the theory is, they come from the superconscious mind, that part of you that's all-knowing, connected. And having a superconscious mind is a great goal to go for, by the way. Technical terms in the brain, I'll share this very quickly. When your default mode network begins to quieten down, which is your wandering mind, your ruminating mind, your central executive network comes online, we're more present, we can observe our thoughts, we can be more task orientated, more focused, go into flow states and more intuitive. Lots of benefits from that. So do look it up. I'll talk about it more if you want me to. Um, actually, I will be talking about it more. Uh, but if you put in the comments, if you want to know more, it'd be great to know if you are definitely interested in how to do that. So, um, the exercise I want to share with you is very, very simple. We have to tap into the power of your imagination, which might feel like a car that's tr start having trouble to start, first of all, because often using our imagination in a positive way can feel quite difficult. It might be very good at catastrophizing, but when it comes to thinking of something positive for yourself, it might feel difficult at first, but keep on exploring just for the fun of it. Let's make this into a glorious little adventure for you. Okay, so I'd like you to think about what your best life would look like. What would your, uh, you know, dream life would be like? And don't hold back on this. Don't hold back on this at all. Yeah, really think about what is it that you would love to experience in life. Not what other people think you want. Yeah, not the materialistic side of things. You can focus on that a little bit, of course. But think about it. what is it that you truly would love to experience. If you knew you could not fail, what would you love to be doing in life? Yeah. If you wanted to contribute something to this world of ours, to your community, to the people around you, what would it be? And imagine it, write it down. You know, not everyone's visual, you know, talk it through. But the more you begin to visualize it, yeah, begin to see it. Where are you? Who are you with? You know, what are you doing? 
and really get a sense of what are you doing in this amazing life of yours? And despite, you know, if your ego is going, well, this is impossible, ignore that for now. You know, it's wittering on like a little budgie with verbal diarrhea. Just let it just do its thing whilst you lead from your super conscious mind for the moment. Think about it. what is it that you truly want. And then begin to think about, yeah, what little small steps could take you in that direction. You know, so we're creating new thoughts. You might feel a sense of gratitude for, you know, A, this video, you're hearing it right now, and the only moment in the universe that actually matters, the present moment. But get a sense of gratitude for what you could create, because you are a master creator. What could you create with the infinite possibilities available to you in your future right now? Think about it. The future is unwritten, no matter what your mind says. But so if we're going to create something, let's create something to aim for. To create the future you desire. And then think about what little actions could take you there. Yeah, so thoughts, new thoughts, new feelings, new behaviors. And just repeat this every now and then. You know, but create a little plan. What steps will help you get there? You know, begin to pay attention then to the magic, which is when your superconscious mind is working more in your alignment. And again, you begin to notice those synchronicities or you begin to notice um, those opportunities and potential for you to begin to explore. That course might pop up or someone might say something to you where you're like, oh, I'll look it up. And before you know it, you're following that little rabbit hole. Pay attention. Pay attention to the power of your superconscious mind. Let it guide you. Yeah. And if you can let your ego and your default mode red network rest, and you can do that with mindfulness practice, you can do that with meditation. There's plenty on my channel for you. I provide a lot of free resources. Um, when you quieten it down, you can hear your own intuition guide your way. And that is where your trust will come from. Yeah, Your intuition is always there. It's available to you. You might have even forgotten how intuitive you can be at times and how many things you've got right in life. Yeah, As we develop a victim mindset or learned helplessness through an ego, that creates a story that you can't be trusted, you've got things to regret, and you can't have the future you want. Just absolute nonsense. Yeah, focus on, if we go back to this, focus on creating the ideal future for yourself. Move away from trying to fix yourself. You're not a project, you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You're a normal human being with normal struggles. I promise you that, no matter how it feels. Move your mind away from that and begin to create for just for the pure fun of it, for the pure curiosity, for the pure adventure, the life you truly want to live. Yeah, new thoughts, new feelings, new behaviors, new mindset. If you'd like help on this, comment below. I'm here for you. And if you would like, um, me to talk more about the default mode network and central executive network and the salience network. There's another one. Um, please do ask because it's a, a subject that I'm very interested in. I have done a, uh, an interview with Dr. Uh, Jose Coras Mayer, who did a brilliant book, Breakthrough, all about the default mode network. I'd highly recommend that. I'll also pop a link down below. But if you want me to talk more about the superconscious and moving on from anxiety to build the life that you truly want, Comment below and I'll create something for you. Have a wonderful day.